<laughs> okay. Hello, humans. Hello, humans. April 18. Coming up on uh, both Hitler's birthday and the uh, burning of the cow uh, in Israel. Um, <coughs> anyway, um, taking a few minutes to get some sun here. I had been out uh, cleaning the office up, arranging stuff. We're making progress. A lot of work there, but um, things are, are proceeding. So maybe at some point it'll be uh, convenient to use as a studio again. Be able to do some uh, videos. Anyway, uh, so a couple of things to talk about. Uh, May is uh, Chemtrail Awareness Month. Now, bear in mind I'm outside. We might get uh, logging trucks and, and other noise here. Uh, so May, May is Chemtrail Awareness Month. And we're uh, seeing some of the effects of that already, starting to pimp and pump that idea up, along with the um, pointing out the obvious connection between chemtrails and... Um, the flooding in Dubai, <laughs> that kind of thing, right? Somebody really fucked up when they uh, did Dubai, or it was a hit. You just can't tell, right? Uh, I don't think that they're that incompetent, but this shit can get out of control because they're dealing with uh, inherently um, dynamic systems, which can become uh, unstable uh, very rapidly with, uh, s sometimes with a uh, minimal amount of extra energy put in inappropriately at the wrong point. So and it's just, uh, an aspect of, um, of unstable systems when you're dealing with that kind of dyna dynamism. Anyway, um, so in the month of May, send or, or don't send me. Don't send me any chemtrail photos to my email address. That's not going to do you any good. I'm not going to post these things on Twitter for you. If you don't have a Twitter account, that's fine. But um, you've got to post them on Twitter. And then tag me in the, uh, uh, in the post in order for this thing to be considered. Because I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing, any, doing all this work. And we're just going to automate it and let Twitter do it. So if you can get a following and you can get a lot of people to to retweet it or like it, then you stand a chance of winning a, uh, a gold eagle, right? Because I'm giving away three ounces of gold in June, in early June. I don't know how long it'll take me, maybe a few days, maybe a week. But what, what I'm going to determine is uh, who had the most liked and who had the most retweeted uh, chemtrail photo and then who had the most uh retweeted um video kim trail video right keep it under two minutes because people just won't walk, watch it then um that long and that that affects the algorithm on the retweet aspect of it how long the uh, individual watches it uh so Okay, so, so other other housekeeping here. Uh, if you've got a Kindle device, you may want to go and, and get it loaded up with a bunch of books to read on the off chance or the uh, supposition that uh, you might be involved in some level of uh, internet, if not uh, power blackout here this, uh, this year, and you might just need something to read, right? Or go stock up and get a bunch of books and set them aside and, and uh, don't read them right away. Just a bit of, of advice here. It may turn out to be uh, useful. Um, okay, so uh, there's a lot of stuff out there about the Jew AI as opposed to these other Palestinians. In any event, here's the thing about that. These programs are deterministic um, in spite of what uh, individuals like um, Kerry Cassidy and um, Patriot Underground and and all of these guys will tell you and Charlie Ward and all these kind of kind of people, AI is not sentient. It can't ever be sentient. It has no desires. It can't make any decisions. AI functions, and I'll tell you this factually: AI functions in such a way that it can only produce results from what is already available to it as its training material.
So grasp this. If you were to give me three disparate subjects, I could write you a short story about those three disparate subjects. Uh, you know, pick, pick any three objects and, and I'd write you a short story about it that would bring out human emotion. Okay, that would elicit from you or within you, however you want to think about it, some level of response uh, that you had not anticipated about those three items. Um, AI can't do this. If you give it three items and tell it to create a short story, it can only create a short story within the formats that it's been told that short stories operate in and from the material that it was used on uh, to train it and from that material that is uh, within its source material. So it cannot create anything <coughs> that doesn't already exist within those sources because it goes and looks shit up. It does not think. It, there is no cogitation there whatsoever. Now, all of the people that are telling you AI and all of this kind of shit, uh, AI is going to take over your brain and all these kind of things, are, are just uh, fear-mongering, right? And they're, they're uh, very low technical intelligence, so they don't understand that this is not, not physically possible. Uh, but you're going to hear a lot of it, okay, because of, of what's happening now and what's going to happen as part of this developing Israeli mistake. And that is relative to um, AI battlefields and all this sort of thing, right? And so the classic example is that AI cannot create and it cannot um, discriminate because it's just software running sensors and, and some level of devices. It can't discriminate uh, beyond those things that are in its database. So the classic example is the military testing AI. It didn't understand a person walking backwards or another one hopping like a rabbit, this kind of thing, right? And so it, because it was not within its source material, it could not react to it. It, 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 it was not even, so it's not ever aware. It doesn't, it's not ever aware of anything. No AI is aware of anything. And, uh, so because those, those actions were not within its parameter for within its database of parameters. Uh, they, they were completely ignored, completely unseen by the AI. So the, the soldiers were invisible to the AI as they went on up and destroyed it. You know, and all they had to do was go touch the pillbox or the machine or something in order to prove that they had done it. And so the AI producer people uh, so okay so that's the main story it gets out leaked out into the press this is years old and so now the ai people say well they've got this solved and they've got that solved and they've got this solved the problem is that the way that they're solving these things is what's known as brute force right what they're basically doing is trying to cram in and build a database of such massive proportions that they have all the options covered um <laughs> which is which is really stupid and and it's big but it, they have to do it that way because you can't make a computer sentient in self-monitoring right it just doesn't happen so so uh and i worked in ai languages since uh prologue in the 1980s logging truck hang on Looks like a 50,000 pounder. Um, anyway, uh, so over these next few months, you're gonna hear a whole lot about AI. Just a second, another one. Anyway, a lot of this stuff that's coming out is like prep material, right? They need to shift the understanding of the normies from one level of uh, grasp of our uh, particular um, environment here on planet Earth. Uh, and they've got to shift it over to the point where uh, they understand that we're now in sci-fi world because a lot of people don't grasp this, all right? So right now, uh, most of the normies are going to consider themselves, it doesn't matter if they think the earth is flat or the, it, the earth is round, they're going to think of themselves as living in this little uh, biospheric boundary on the surface of the earth, right? And so their enemies are going to be, uh, because of our biology, their enemies are going to be 
Yep. Hang on. At their enemies are, are going to be conceptually within their minds at their height and, and observed horizontally. So, so if you're thinking yourself about, if you think Israel is your enemy and you consider this in your mind, you will probably grant me that when you think about it, wherever you are on this planet, you think about Israel, your enemy, and there is like this uh, mental tracery that would have a line going from your thought over to Israel horizontally or around the, you know, around the uh, curve of the earth uh, to reach that point. So basically, in other words, you look at your enemy from the height in the the perspective of your eyes and this has to change because in sci-fi world your enemy can come at you from directly above right some place we don't look um or from behind you or from you know theoretically if you want to think about it that way which i don't uh these interdimensionals right i can explain some of that but in any event um so in sci-fi world uh, which we're emerging into here uh, through hyper novelty and through these next couple of years, we're going to have to consider ourselves in a much more dangerous environment at a, and truly at a, at a much more um, increased level of paranoia uh, just to keep going and get through it. Okay. And um, uh, to, you know, like settle into it, but they have to, to have to educate the people. They have to bust the paradigm of, uh, threats are only at the surface level of the earth. So you're going to hear a lot of stuff about threats from under the water and threats from up in the air. And we're seeing a lot, of course, with the, you know, Dubai, with the Judus getting uh, Lahaina in um, Paradise Valley, uh, Judus or otherwise. That's hang on a second. Um, so Judus are otherwise known as Jewish space lasers, and they're probably operating out of C-130s. Uh, some form of that. In any event, though, so uh, you're going to hear a lot about this over these next few months uh, because it's the uh, attempt of the sock to prepare the um, consensus uh, for a different view of ourselves relative to uh, our, our uh, risk matrix, right? The, the threat matrix around us because we have to start thinking about things in a radically different way as they bring in um, and introduce the alien reproduction vehicle stuff. Now, there may indeed still yet be battles between uh, the deep state offspring, I guess you'd call them, of rogue corporations uh, and uh, the developing uh, power base that is the SOC. And so we may see some bizarre shit go down over these next uh, probably... 11 months, 12 months, maybe, um, uh, relative to UFOs, UAPs, uh, corporations and governments and nobody getting along with, with anybody else in obvious, uh, tells that there's some kind of a backstory that we're not being, uh, informed. Right. So, so that'll be, it'll be murky. Uh, let's see what else do I have here. Okay, so um, the chemtrails, my contest is obviously to get as much promotion on the idea of chemtrails and get as much out of, out there into the normies uh, so that they start talking about it. Um, and uh, so as of June 1, I'll start doing that. As of May 1, the contest is open. You post a, a chemtrail picture or a chemtrail uh, video and then try and get as much uh, in the way of likes or retweets as possible. Um, and at the end of the month, we'll tally and see who had the most, and they get the coins. Um, now, as far as chemtrails, here's something that a lot of people won't won't consider. Just a second. Okay, so... Um, I don't want to... Say. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I'm a military brat, right? My dad was in the army, 101st Airborne. Um, there's a saying that, you know, uh, like if you're a woman married to a guy in the army, you're in the army, right? Uh, if your father's in the army, you're in the army. And that's just the way it is. So I, as far as I'm concerned, I, my first 17 years, I was in the army. I, I grew up in the institution of the army. Um, you meet a lot of people, uh, 
in the process of uh, growing up like that. And um, uh, sometimes you hang on to these associations, even though the army moves you all the way around the planet from each other. In my experience, a lot of times you do uh, return to bump into each other because the, the father's on a compatible career path, right? So my dad was doing logistics where this other guy was doing, um, uh, command and control stuff. And, you know, then later on my dad did uh, command and control stuff. And this other guy had been doing some aspects of, lo- uh, logistics, but they ended up at the same base. So, you know, I would hang out with the kids and then we'd be separated by the military for three or four years. Uh, you know, they may go to Japan, you know, uh, we might go to Europe, that kind of thing. Right. And, uh, anyway, though, so, um, I, as in the normal course of events, uh, our co, you know, crossing, uh, 70 years of time, uh, our Uh, so it, it just turns out that some of the cohorts that are left from my youth, uh, were more friendly to me, uh, than enemies. I've got, got some of these old enemies still alive too, but that's another issue anyway. But I was talking to a guy I hadn't talked to, uh, for a long time and we went into some, uh, really deep shit and he had had a life and career path that was somewhat similar, uh, because we both had a technical bent. And he's, uh, let me see, he's five years older than me. So he's 76. Um, anyway, so, uh, he had some things to say because he went into a, uh, technical, uh, work that was basically in the subcontracting world directly for the military. Whereas I had subcontracting work for major technical corporations, mostly about, uh, software, uh, who then may have had dealings with government, but I wasn't doing the direct stuff, right? Wasn't like I was working for a military defense contractor per se. Uh, I was one or two steps removed because I was always doing, uh, subcontracting work for somebody else who was a subcontractor, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, so this buddy of mine, um, he went into, uh, technical work. I haven't talked to him for, geez, 15, 20 years. Uh, no, it was, 21 years. Um, and, uh, he went into technical work, but he went into, uh, the technical development on a firmware and hardware basis, uh, that, uh, was in classified industry kind of shit. Right. Uh, so I wrote code that ultimately was classified, but it was kind of after the fact of me writing it, I, I never signed on to a classified project at the beginning. Uh, so there was only two instances of that where code that I'd produced was, was deemed <laughs> that it shouldn't get out. Right. And it was really stupid for the reasons too. Uh, but in any event, so, um, uh, so this buddy of mine, uh, he goes into classified, uh, uh, business and that's really to a certain extent why we didn't maintain contact as adults. Uh, even though we were both technically minded and blah, 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 and had all this is because a lot of his work was indeed, uh, at a, uh, at a deeper or darker level, uh, doing all this classified shit. But, but anyway, when we reconnected the other day, he was, he was laughing, joking about my Kim trail contest. And he said, you know, he's going <laughs> to set up a, <laughs> a camera on his roof and let it let it and automate it uh and he'll win he'll win one of the coins hang on a second he lives in an area that's heavily chemtrailed we were talking about the health effects especially on old people not good i gave him some tips we'll see if it helps him he's you know he's 76 and not not doing well um Anyway, though, uh, he was telling me that there's this, there's this hidden subcomponent that, uh, he knows the military is aware of because he wrote, uh, software to control sensors, uh, about this very, um, idea. Okay. So I'm not going to say anything that would betray this guy or give away too much as to who he is. But anyway, the sensors were, uh, following a non EMF signal. Uh, kind of, uh, uh, energy 
uh, in order to trigger them. And uh, when they were triggered, they went off and told the software X, Y, Z, and then he wrote the software and, and what it did about it. But but basically what he was saying was in that project that he was working there, he, he came across the thought, and this was not that long ago. Okay, so I retired in <coughs> 2018, and he more or less retired in 2011. Um, uh, he did one other job after that as a subcontractor, but he, he was just burnt out and had health issues after 2011. So it just wasn't, um, uh, wasn't doable for him anyway, though. Um, so, it, so his knowledge prior to 2011, uh, included this little tidbit. And that is that the military is aware that there's a significant possibility like, um, uh, a known probability. Okay. So that's how they think about it. A known probability of, uh, disruptions of, uh, computers at a, um, as a, and damage at a chip level, uh, from solar events. Uh, and that this is one of the the reasons that chemtrails are structured as they are not one of the reasons necessarily that they're doing the chemtrails, right? But, Every time they do anything, they always pile shit on. And so, and they use the extra, hang on. They use the extra um, uh, things they can do as leverage to help sell these weird-ass, goofy ideas. Uh, but anyway, so my buddy was telling me that, you know, prior to his leaving that employment, there was a real concern on the part of military that there could be a solar event. And, you know, global civilization to some extent would be wiped out. But what really freaked them out was this idea that in the military thinks of us as on a globe. And so it's not true that the military is operating on a flat earth model and they're not telling you this. But the military thinks of us on a globe. And so imagine this idea that if the sun were to pop off a solar flare, some of the things the military is worried about much more complex than the solar flare idea. But nonetheless, the concept comes across the same way. And it is emitted towards the earth, only a portion of the earth from... Uh, uh, about one third of the earth would get direct blast from whatever the fuck it was, depending on, and depending on when the, where the earth was in its rotation would depend on whether or not you got totally wiped out. And then there would be another one third. So this is in rings and in, in a very, very spherical kind of a, a sense. So that one third of the sphere, uh, gets a big blast and all the computers are really fucked. And then there's another third around there that would be, um, uh, severely damaged to the point that they wouldn't be operational, there wouldn't be networks, all the satellites and everything in that whole area would be taken out, yada, yada, yada. And that we know this because of the the time trouble and so on that the military goes to with satellites relative uh, very, very rapidly. Anyway, though, so the idea that the military had to wrestle with was that if such a thing should occur, that there was this, because we were becoming increasingly digitized and increasingly dependent on these devices, that if such a thing uh, occurred, uh, civilization would, but it would be even worse than that for them, because along the way, it wouldn't go Mad Max, but uh, what they were saying, I, I think it was, um, would Tonga rule the world. <laughs> okay, so the idea was that if the solar flare hit when Eurasia, the greater part of China, Russia, and all of that mass into Europe was facing directly at the sun, uh, it would wipe out all the production facilities for computer chips and all of this kind of stuff. And so only those places in the far South Pacific on the other side of the planet uh, would survive with their computers intact. And therefore, would Tonga rule the world? <laughs> so anyway, you know, the military does have some sense of humor about their um, doomsday stuff. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I actually think I'd like to live in a world ruled by Tonka. <laughs> It'd be better than the shit we've got now. Anyway, though, so my buddy was saying, you know, so there is that aspect of it, that if we do away with chemtrails. So the, the military is also of the opinion that the chem or my buddy is, that he was working on a project that suggested to his mind that the military is worried about uh, gradual degradation, that if they didn't have chemtrails, it'd be this gradual degradation, even without a major solar event, just because the kind of continuous basis. 
So there is that to contend with. We may not be able to effectively get rid of them until we do something about hardening the chips and have that discussion. Wow, getting busy today. Okay, so um, I've had my son, I've <laughs> had my say, and I'm going to head in and see if this works. I had previously dumped a whole brand new cup of hot tea on it. <laughs> so I don't know if this fucker is recording or not. Anyway, I'll find out. Talk to you guys later.